Hi, we're underneath the hood of our 1972 Plymouth Duster. It's got a 70 grill in it. It really has a lot of eyes to it. But let's concentrate on what's underneath the hood. I keep jumping around at things. Uh, you don't have to worry about air conditioning because there isn't any. Um, don't have to worry about the power steering or power brakes because there's none of those either. But what there is under here is a 340 six pack with a nice stiff cam in it. It has the correct style exhaust manifolds on it. Um, real nice high performance exhaust system that we did on the uh, undercarriage uh, presentation of the vehicle. This motor absolutely rips. Uh, I don't know how many horsepower it's making. I know that the four barrel ones were making somewhere around 325, 330. This is a six pack with the correct 346 pack intake manifold on it and a cam. So, you know, it's going to be somewhere really, really close to that 400 mark. Very, very close. In a light body car like this, it cooks. Uh, the uh, heaters are still hooked up to the uh, uh, vehicle, the, uh, the heater hoses. Uh, the correct underhood pad to it. Engine compartment is absolutely gorgeous. It does have the electronic uh, Chrysler ignition system in it. A new master cylinder, new stainless uh, brake lines on it, uh, brand spanking new battery, at least a four pass big aluminum radiator in this thing with the shroud uh, and a seven blade fan to go along with it. It does also have an auxiliary fan uh, under the hood. Um, just a really nice great engine compartment. It does have the uh, fender tag still intact. Really non-applicable. You can see that the car was to start life, but it really doesn't make any difference. This is what it is now. You got a 346 pack engine hooked to a four-speed Mopar transmission that drives the wheels through an eight and three-quarter inch heavy-duty Mopar rear end. It doesn't get much better than that. It's a great, great engine compartment. Nice high horsepower car. Let's close the hood and go around it and see what we can see. Duster. Didn't start life this way, but at this point of its life, it does have a built 346 pack engine hooked to a Mopar 4 speed transmission that drives through an 8 and 3 quarter posi rear. This car absolutely cooks. Hurts your ears when these carburetors crack open. Great looking car. 340 wedge designation on the hood because that's what it is. Paint on this car is really, really nice. The fit, the finish, everything. If you notice the uh, gap around the hood, to the cowl area, to the front fenders, about an eighth of an inch the whole way around. Couldn't get any better than that. The anodized aluminum around the grill is just as nice as it was when it was new. The fitment is gorgeous. Again, the anodization around your uh, headlights, uh, both sides, equally as nice. Uh, really great, not chipped up. Uh, in a filler panel between the grill and the bumper, the bumper itself is just as nice as you'd ever want to find one. Uh, really great fitment on it. From what I can see, it's just about as perfect a fit as you could ever hope to find on, a, on an A-body Mopar. It's really great front end on this car. Uh, these uh, parking lights are all nice and crystal clear on it. Plastic grill is nice. No chunks missing or no breaks or cracks in it anywhere. Great looking front end on this car. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. I love the paint on this car. It's very, very nice. It's much, much better than a driver quality paint job on this car. Very nice car. Let's see what's on site. Okay, driver's side of our little duster, seat duster designation. And this is actually reflective tape where it says duster. This is not, this is. Uh, black striping really, really adds a lot of pop to this vehicle. Again, look at the cowl area, to the hood, to the front fender, to the door. If you close your eyes, you really can't feel anything. Nice door to fender, to rocker panel fitment. Correct arms, incorrect blades. The blades are uh, newer design, uh, absolutely more efficient than the ones that came on this car, but they are not the correct blades that came in. Tinted front windshield. Where the windshield transitions down onto the dashboard, normally there's a lot of crappy it just wear through the years. It looks like on the rubber where the transition uh, takes place from the dash to the uh, um, windshield. This car does not have that. It's just as clean and nice as the day it was new. Top of the uh, uh, dashboard pad is just the same way. It's just absolutely as nice as it was new. There's no marks whatsoever in. Let me check to make sure. No, no marks whatsoever on the uh, trim around the uh, 
a front windshield, drip rail molding, there's a dinghy here, a couple little dinghies right here. And that's it for that one. Uh, rubber around the uh, window, your window seals, nice as resilient as can be. Uh, wipes, whiskers, whatever you want to call them, uh, just as fresh and nice as could possibly be. Correct style Mopar mirror, not adjustable for this year. The top is absolutely gorgeous. It just, uh, it's as flat and glossy and clean as could possibly be. There's no marks or dents or deviations whatsoever in the top of this car. Absolutely none. Looks like tinted glass on the sides too, from what I can tell. Hard to tell, but we'll call it tinted. Door handle, no uh, patina whatsoever, just as nice a crow as you'd ever want to find. Absolutely nice. Again, look at the fitment. Look at this. The door to the quarter panel. Sail panel, no marks. Absolutely no. No indications of any work ever being done. Don't see anything on that molding around the window. The hat rack has been replaced and it is absolutely brand spanking new. Uh, no provisions for speakers in it. You could add them if you choose, but at this point, uh, this person put the original uh, hat shelf in with no speaker uh, provisions. Nice tin. Nice as can be. What the heck is this? Usually. Oh, check that out. A magnetic door opener for the gas with the modern style where you just put the hose in. You don't have to take the lid off. You just put the hose in. It's a magnet. It snaps in, snaps out. Pretty slick. I like that. That's neat. 340 designation. The striping really adds a lot to this car. I mean, it, it just makes it pop out at you. Also what makes it pop, the original style 14 inch rally wheels that came with this vehicle. That would be the original equipment style wheels that came with the Argent centers just the way they should be. Uh, the wheel lips, uh, the wheel trim uh, rings are uh, uh, brushed on the inside, polished on the outside just the way they should be from the factory. A nice looking side of the car. I mean you look down the side of this thing it looks like it doesn't have any doors. It's as nice a vehicle as you'd ever find on the driver's side. Okay, back end of our little duster. Again, you can see the rear deck really fits nicely. About an eighth of an inch on each side. The paint is just as nice as it is on the top or hood or anything else. The paint on this car is just really nice. It's much nicer than a, a, a driver quality paint job. And a little bit more of a gap here. What? There's why. This needs to adjust it down, that will adjust a little closer, get us closer where we need to be. Just an adjustment, has nothing whatsoever to do with the, the integrity of the vehicle. The correct flat black, semi-flat black striping, it does have the reflective duster 340 with the dust cloud, little eyeballs in it. The uh, tail lights, uh, backup lights, just as clean and shiny as can possibly be in these enclosures. The whole filler panel in the back is just as straight and nice as you'd ever want to find. Absolutely straight. Bumper fitment, again, you got to see that. That thing is just absolutely as precision a fit as you could ever, ever hope uh, to find in an A-body car. That is as nice as it gets. Again, the whole back end of this car is the same as the front and the sides. We haven't found anything other than a slight adjustment on the deck lid. That's it. The two, uh, two and an eighth inch turn downs in the back really, really add some nice look to it. Chrome on the bumper is like it was when it was new. Probably better. Let's see what's on the passenger side. Okay, passenger side, 340 designation on our semi-flat black vinyl striping. Again, nice tin all around. Nice sharp edges. Sail panel just as nice as you ever want to find. Trim around the back window, the same as the other side. I still think it looks like tinted glass. No, I mean, don't quote me on it, but it really looks as though the glass is tinted on this vehicle. Uh, backlight and the sides. I know the front is for sure. 
Also, these windows do open out, too, so it gives you a lot of ventilation. So even if it is raining or whatever, you can open these windows up for some ventilation through the car. Uh, quarter to the front, the back part of the door. Nice as you'd ever want to find. Original rocker panels. Again, your uh, white whiskers, just as new as you'd ever want to find. Door handle, absolutely brand new. Drip rail. Nothing. Zero on this one. Trim around the front window. Nothing on it either. It's really as nice as you'll ever find. I can't get away from this, the way these doors fit. We've been really, really lucking out on all the vehicles we've been getting lately. The, the fitment has just been exemplary on all of them. Look at this. Unbelievable. You know, this is on an entry-level Mopar. Uh, back in the year. Uh, it's amazing that you find that kind of fitment, but you do. Same thing, tin, side marker lights, reflective duster. I can't find anything, guys. This is this. <laughs> adjust the deck lid, pull the trigger on it. I can't see a single thing that you could, you could find a negative on this car. Uh, we did the undercarriage video already, and I know the car is all original underneath. It's never had any trauma whatsoever, nothing, zero. Uh, this car is as nice a car as you can find. It's a 72, but it presents itself as a 1970 with the grill and the appointments that are on it. Uh, the car itself is uh, an absolute blast to drive, which you'll see in the video. Uh, it has a six-pack on it, and it cracks open just the way it should, too. The car pulls like a freight train. It runs really nice. It's a four-speed. It doesn't need power steering. Uh, the front end of this thing is light enough that uh, it feels like power steering when you're driving it. This is a really straight, nice vehicle. Um, the precision of the fitment of this car is, which is totally amazing to me for an entry-level car to have that uh, precise of fitment from the doors to the hood to the deck lid to the rocker panels to everything on this vehicle. It's as nice as you'll ever find one. It's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, you'll love the price of it, and I guarantee you'll love the way it runs and handles. It's a fantastic car. I had it for a couple days, and it's a blast. Again, this car on the outside, the undercarriage, the engine compartment, everything is as nice as you could possibly, possibly ever hope to find in one. No, it is not a numbers correct car. No, it doesn't have the original engine and transmission and rear end in it. But who cares? Look at the quality, the fit, and finish of this car. You're not going to pay what you would for one that... Uh, uh, was a numbers correct car. Headliner, nice and solid the way it should be. Again, the dash pad is absolutely brand new. The door panels themselves are as new as could possibly be. Original headrests, not redone, original ones. Uh, still the vinyl um, molding that was on them, uh, new. I know that the seats have to be done. They're, re they're too new, they're too fresh. Uh, panels in the back, again, mimic the uh, doors in the front. They're absolutely new. Back seat and the front seat are both reupholstered and as new as can be. It does have a fold down armrest with it. It also has seat belts front and rear with the additional shoulder belts that came with these cars as an option. Uh, really a great looking car under here. I mean, it's just as nice as you'll ever find with original uh, sun visors on it. Steering wheel has no brakes whatsoever. Steering uh, wheel horn is still resilient, still blows, obviously. Um, fuel gauge, amp gauge, uh, idiot lights, but they've been replaced with uh, an oil pressure gauge and a temperature gauge, analog, underneath the dashboard. Parking brake is functional. Uh, everything in this car works except for the windshield wipers, which we have to have addressed. We have to get that. This is the key to the whole operation here. Nice flat hearse shifter. Um, pistol grip, four speed, 346 pack. This car is a vehicle that you really, really need to take a look at. You're not going to find a better quality vehicle anywhere, especially for the money. We encourage everybody to come down and take a look at everything we have. Look at this car. I know you're interested in it. But look at everything else we have. We have 80 of them on the floor here, all of this quality or better. And um, a price range anywhere from uh, $20,000 to up into six figures. And we have it all. A very big diversity of, 
of everything, any, anything that you want, whether it's Ford or GM or Chrysler. And there's some weird ones in here, too. I don't even know what they are. Kevin sent them down. Anyway, um, we encourage everyone to come down and look at these vehicles in person. Airfare is really cheap. You're close enough. Drive over for the weekend or for the day. Spend it. You're in Daytona Beach. There's so many things to do in this area. You'll run out of things to do. You'll never, you'll, you'll never run out of things to do. Um, it's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's a car that you really need to take a look at if you want a real screaming performance car for a very nominal price. This is a car that you want to look at. Let's see what we got here. The horn works. The uh, turn signals are working. I can see them indicating on the alternator, which is blinking, but the indicators in the dash are not. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I know the speedometer works. I drove this car for a couple days. Fuel gauge shows a half tank. It's correct. Temperature gauge in the dash does not work. It does work on the uh, couple gauges underneath the dash. The temperature and the uh, oil pressure are both uh, functioning there. Uh, alternator gas is, is working as it should. Uh, wipers. Let's try wipers. No wipers. We have no wipers. Got to fix wipers. Definitely important you have windshield wipers. We can do without a couple items, but wipers we gotta have. Nice straight running car, goes down the road straight as could be. Well, we get on a flat up here, so I would go to the steering wheel. to the left a little tiny bit. I don't know why, but it is. Let's try the brakes. Uh, stop straight as an arrow. Going down the road, it does pull to the left a little bit. We don't know why, but it does. I knew that guy was going to pull up. Run a car. I drove this car for a couple days and uh, it absolutely does nothing wrong. It's a nice running car. It's very tight, it's very precise, shifts nicely. It's got a uh, Hurst with a uh, pistol grip shifter on it. Uh, really a nice, nice driving, nice running car. Car, a bright looking car, green. Um, let's go under the undercarriage here, see what we got. We got new shocks in the front, we got new brakes in the front, new discs, uh, new rotors, calipers are fresh looking, the hardware is relatively fresh. Brand new uh, Mopar starter on it. Motor's been out and completely redone, top to bottom. Engine is completely revamped. It's a four-speed car. It does have the uh, Chrysler New Process um, tranny in it. Subframes are really gorgeous on this car. Very, very nice. 
tie rods nice and clean looking. There's no wear whatsoever evident on them. Cast iron exhaust manifolds transition on to, and we're going to call them uh, two and two and a quarter inch uh, exhaust. Hurst shifter. No leaks whatsoever ever that you can see that on the uh, oil pan or the bell housing area or the transmission. Everything is as dry as can possibly be. There's absolutely nothing leaking underneath this vehicle. Just came off the road, took it for a ride, absolutely nothing. Some frame on this side the same way as the other one, just as nice as can be. A couple of little superficial marks from the jack through the years, you know, lifting the car up. but. Uh, other than that, the subframe is absolutely gorgeous. It does retain its original floor pans and substructure. This is all original. It has not been replaced. Absolutely not. All your pinch wells are evident onto the uh, rocker panels uh, from the uh, floor pans. Drive shaft has a new U-joint in it. Looks like a new Hurst shifter in it, actually. The mechanism itself looks very fresh. Mounting plate is new on it. Clutch and pressure plate is absolutely new in this. Uh, you can see all the hardware on it, and the, the front shield is missing off of the uh, pan here. It's, it's a dust shield that's there, and uh, you see the uh, flywheel and clutch assembly has been out of the vehicle. The fork is also brand new, you can see. So it does have a new clutch pressure plate and throw out bearing, I'm sure, in it. Parking brake is hooked up and functional in the vehicle. There's absolutely nothing so far. We're halfway back through here, and um, there's absolutely nothing. Floorboards are definitely the original floor pans on this vehicle. Uh, original fuel lines on the right-hand side uh, going forward. Original brake lines on the driver's side going rear. Uh, it, it's as new a car as you're ever going to find underneath. Let's see what's on the second half. Uh, under chassis mufflers, they're sort of a turbo muffler, a little shorter. They do have a real nice sound to them. Not objectionably loud, but just a really, really nice sound to them. Nice curvature to the uh, rear springs that are correct for this car. Uh, both sides are nice and fresh looking. Air shocks in the back, relatively new air shocks. Fin drums in the rear to go with the discs in the front. The gas tank is as new as you're ever going to find one. It's the original tank also. Still has a little of the Chrysler splatter undercoating on it. Eight and three quarter heavy duty rear end in this thing, and it is a posi rear end. The tailpipes transitioning out of the mufflers, I'm going to call them two and an eighth. I think those are two and a quarter going in, two and an eighth coming out. Two turn downs in the rear. The uh, subframes in the back uh, transitioning up over the uh, uh, rear differential are just as new and nice as could possibly be. They are really, really undamaged through the years. Absolutely nothing. Floor pans in the rear in the trunk area, uh, all original and just like they were new from the factory. Uh, the original tabs are still on the drop downs and the quarter panels where they transition onto the floor pans coming down your drop downs. This car is 100% original underneath. It is. It, it retains its original Chrysler sound deadener. Uh, the subframes are just unobstructed, undamaged in any way. There's actually no marks on the rear ones anywhere that I can detect. A couple little jack marks on the front. That's it. There's absolutely nothing else under this vehicle that uh, I can tell you that uh, isn't 100% original as it was in 1972 when this car was released by Chrysler. So you got a nice looking uh, duster here. Really nice duster.